डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी Hello students I assistant professor Mayur Thakur welcomes you all in the video lecture series of Department of English School of Humanities and Social Sciences at Dr Baba Saheb Ambedkar Open University Ahmedabad in the last lecture we discussed the historical and literary characteristics of the 18th century English literature which is popularly known as Augustan period from 1701 to 1745 or we can say the age of pope in today's lecture we'll discuss the very first unit of the text in the block 1 of the master's course titled tom jones now let's look at the components first we'll discuss objective then text info about author information character chart of the novel the evolution of the novel and the novel as a comedy and the check your progress the last point will be discussed now let us begin with the objectives the aim of this unit is to examine the relationship between fictional and realistic descriptions to discuss the emergence of prose and the novel focusing on the common ways of life to get familiarity with types of fiction in the 18th century english literature so these are the objectives that we that we are going to discuss in this lecture now let us discuss the very first information about the text the title of the novel as we have discussed in the earlier period in the last lecture that uh, the history of tom jones a foundling which is a subtitle of this novel a complete title which is a second novel by henry fielding which was published in 1749 and the genre that novel has is a kind of comic epic in prose and the major characters consist of in this novel is Partridge, Jenny Jones, Bridget, Allworthy, Lady Bolston, Harriet, Fitzpatrick, and Mr. Dowling. We will discuss some basic issues here, which will help, which will help you to understand not just Tom Jones but also the subsequent novels prescribed in your syllabus. Now that you are pursuing master's degree, you will need to read wide and variously. Try and find some of the books on the. novels recommended at the end each end of the each end of the block now we'll discuss about author the author henry fielding from 1707 to 754 so henry fielding was born in england he belonged to the augustan age or we can say the age of pope he was very well educated in the beginning he earned his livelihood as journalist and then acquired fame as a novelist he spent the remaining years of his life in discharging duties as a magistrate especially for breaking up the gangs of thieves uh, on the streets of london and he died in 1744 at lisbon now it is famous novels include joseph andrews tom jones emilia and jonathan wild he is known as the father of english novel he is one of the four wheels of the 18th century english novel he relieved the novel from the tyranny and constraint of the lecture of the later and important dignity to the form of novel his novels were essentially the novels of character which describes the realism and realism is the keynote of all his works his novels are said to be the comic epic in, in prose now let's look at the character chart the character chart in the novel is very complex because in 18th century the social and political characters were they were uh, the characters described in this novel is particularly belong to a uh, upper strata of the society and on, on the other hand there is a lower strata of the society so there are in the main character the tom jones has connections with many multiple characters so all this in this chart you will find the every con the connection between every character so kindly look at this chart very carefully now let us look at the novel as the imaginative or fiction the novel is a realistic form it represents the segment of life and society and in this unit we'll discuss in this slide we have seen the some problems regarding the novel the evolution of the novel shift to prose in the 18th century 
the novel as a new literary form and the novel as comedy. The concept of mirroring or reflecting an object is more significant, is more significant and object is more significant in the case of the novel than it would be in the case of poetry or drama. While reading a novel, we may feel that we have been transported to a different world with uh, its own laws, rules and regulations. Towns and village markets, streets and pathways hold out as actual places with their distinct colouring and feel. Yes, the emphasis on actual real things, not only the people so nice speaking with their very own many, many reasons, but ordinary information about their appearances, conditions, opinions and states of mind also is important by the author in his or her own voice. This second aspect of the writer's practice implies that the describing persons, the novelist, has an opinion and the point of view according to which she, she judges or what he or she judges without much scrupulous reactions of the different characters selected consciously and within ostensible purpose for presentation. The judgment of the writer is biased as all judgments are. are. The biases obviously indicate that the writer is totally immersed in the overall fate of the character as well as the effect of their behavior on the life and nature of the society. In the sense, writer can be seen as a responsible member of the actual society of that time as well as the society reflected in the novel. Now, fiction or fictional as, or fiction has come to acquire such strong affinity as with the novel that we use the ter two synonymously terms as Walter Allen in his book. The English novel has drawn our, drawn our attention and this regard the issue of artic, artistic representation, the way writer gives shape to an experience in her or his work, character in a novel symbolizes specific attitude in a given society and the writer contests through them those significant impressions which she or he has gathered from the surroundings. Characters and social impressions make to each made for each uh, make to each other and the end product strongly binds us to the represented action but the writer doesn't nearly gather impressions from life what happens is that impressions received received by the character and are in fact molded and remade into characters by the author in this sense they are truly fixed no molding and remaking employed that author's imagination has been at work in an intense manner there, there is also the problem of a plausible lifelike situations that the writer is supposed to invent this means that characters in the novel cannot be constructed and rendered flesh and blood unless they are placed in identified circumstances of our own world. The man and woman in a work of fiction become over the links with the period in which the writer has lived and stand for projection trends that existed at the time. Through Allworthy, the character in the novel, Weston Jones and Bill, Bill Phil in Tom Jones, for instance, we can close, closely relate family, familiarity with the developments in 18th century England. The process is complex, but the truth is quite simple in a peculiar way. The actual circumstances, the society of a period becomes a necessary component of fiction and it becomes significant history. That is how the, li how the line between the imaginary things and the real gets blurred and history intrudes inevitably into fiction. Now. Before we sum up, the important evolution of the novel, the important point of this today's session is the evolution, that how we evaluate novels as a text. The evolution of the novel can be seen from with begin with some problems. It is, you know, it is useful to go into the history or genesis of the novel. In England, there are a large number of books on this subject that provide good information about Rose work, uh, about day-to-day -day works in the 16th and 17th century. The idea in these books is that the prose works of the earlier period can be clearly linked with the novel in the 18th century. The common point between the two seems to be prose, then there are the stories of discovery, exploration and adventure which also have late claims to parenting this model literary form. It is suggested that the spirit of curiosity, necessity did lose fictional form which provided enough scope to the writer to collect information as well as to question, analyze and access new material around them. And the wandering, ruthless, untitled persona was fascination for new and unknown places could hold immense appeal for the leader at, at them, the imaginary, totally fictional pieces which, is, which were written by the authors in different countries of Europe to entertain the reader, taking him or her on an imaginary voice to the world of mystery and wonderland and magic in this Nothing real was intended for projection, 
the fundamental voting going to give pleasure curiosity suspense and storytelling were supposed to bring this writer writing closer to the novel in this contest all one can say is that important as this imaginary efforts are in the respective languages and period is just causally enlighten us it just causally enlighten us about the emergence of the novel that has come in the wake of such a venture is mere a guesswork now the second point in this slide as we can see ship to prose in the 18th century prose had seldom be the medium of serious creative underwent through before the didn't century before the 18th century bearing a few exceptions writer of the past chose words longer poems poetic drama short poems of definite or indefinite length to share their views experience or vision with the with that how it had to be since the audience considered of the selected few till the middle of the 17th century poems could also be found circulating among among the narrow circle of friends and fellow writers because they alone resume to appreciate imaginary work the idea of the mass of leaders who could be approached to the printed word emerged only in the 18th century so it was a totally completely shift from the poetry to the prose now the novel as a new literary genre or we can say the new literary literary form were emerging in the 18th century the process of the evaluation of a literary form is highly complex because one can see in it a concrete dialectical interconnection between a writer's urge to communicate and involve in an environment which on its part is hardly passive which possessed in its threatening posture with the existing modes of expression if you look at the some significant developments it could be seen in the early 18th century in england on the literally cultural plane on a, on one of these uh, was the and one of these was the rise of the periodicals a magazine or a pamphlet which shout to engage the average person in useful conversation this and this average person was the middle class city develop city developed the gentleman proper or the gentleman in the making who had an interest in the daily occurrences of life who didn't want to merely put to an to put to end together and but to also develop a nonsense pragmatic understanding to guide him such needs were earlier fulfilled in the case of the lower masses by the village person who interpreted the age old principles of life and behavior for the benefit of the common person how about the difference between the need of the new middle class we have in mind and the common person with whom the person communicated lay in their social positioning the particular individual good well afford in the given social conditions in its infancy the novel incorporated some of the functions and traits of the periodicals and that is why novel were emerge after the development of periodical essays in the 18th century so periodical essays were the major reason behind the development of novel now the novel as comedy as we have discussed in drama we have generally we have divided drama into tragedy and comedy and also there are tragic comic types of drama available in the literature but here the novel that developed in the 18th century was comic and mostly described the follies of society generally it we can say it was an age of satire so fielding used to satirize his society as he described the reality as it is now comedy in the 18th century differed immensely from that in the 17th century it became lighter in vein and deal with those issues which could be easily resolved take the case of social manners under whose overall perspective questions such as marriage and low low life were considered by the writers the relationship of love became extremely important in social discourse in which which it takes emphasis was laid on individual's choice the man and the woman together took the decision that not the pressure of the family and society as a consequence of this emphasis in the 18th century and decision making by the individual norms and principles of orthodoxy came under severe criticism one of the reasons why an ordinary person became associated with heroic qualities such as courage and fearlessness was that an important segment of society the middle class to be precise stood to gain from protest and rebellion since that that weaken the hold of the privileged sections on social behavior under this logic marriage became means for the middle class to question the values and norms espoused by entrenched interest in the focus on social manuals takes away from the serious questions of work shelter and upkeep to be provided by society to its members only those who have solved the problems of bread and butter can think of evolving the code of behavior the issues of virtue 
goodness, morality and kindness which fall under the category of ethics and manners are of great interest to the progressive upcoming sections for the discussion of manners suggest that the members of this group have become individually capable of improving their behavior that they have merely to take a close look at close look at their norms and principles in order to in just order to adapt a strategy to execute progression improvement in the in this in the sense that improvement in manners is primary questions of active choice the individually circumstances is expected to examine in the nature of his social environment so that she or he can take guidance from the rules that govern it that the environment can be inimical and become an unsurmountable obstruction is something that is beyond the imagination of these highly active and conscious entity now let us sum up in order to sum up the today's discussion the question that rises from this discussion is to critically comment on the 18th century english novel in every block in at every unit uh, you will you will find a kind of a source which will help you to write your answers now in if if you want to sum up this discussion we can say one of the points on which the middle classes of the 18th century were exercised was transition the question this sections confronted was how to interpret the change that was taking place around them in the world of manners and attitude consequently upon the economic power they had and come to and it come to acquire that is no doubt that change was desirable but could it be pursued with vigor which is possible only when one is one is sure about the positive outcome obviously history could not be ruled ruled back as the history could not be ruled back as the entrance to the landed gender western home the village person in his religious wisdom ended to serve you come in, come across in memorable arguments against and against in support of a change in the books written in the 18th century in which modernization was a much criticized criticizing thing at the same time we notice the definite in the words of those who oppose change or have fighting a losing battle on the other hand change in itself didn't do not anything specific in a vacuum in the spiritual territory it is so happened that the writer stepped forward to fill this va- vacuum through the mole through the role of conversation and their and their contribution to the prose so this is how the prose played an important role in the development of 18th century english literature so in this unit we have discussed that how novel emerges as a dominant form in the 18th century english literature now we'll discussed and the discussion will be continued in the in the third part of of this unit thank you students sadhya yahan par